नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स सो इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट इंपॉर्टेंट इश्यूज रिलेटेड टू करंट अफेयर्स ऑफ द डेट 22nd ऑफ जुलाई 2023 एंड दीज टॉपिक्स आर वेरी फ्रॉम डिफरेंट डिफरेंट एरिया फ्रॉम हिस्ट्री फ्रॉम ज्योग्राफी फॉर इकोनॉमी फॉर पॉलिटी फॉर आर्ट फॉर आर्ट एंड कल्चर फॉर साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर एनवायरमेंट एंड इकोलॉजी फॉर बायोडायवर्सिटी फॉर क्लाइमेट चेंज फॉर सिक्योरिटी फॉर डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट सो दीज टॉपिक्स आर वेरी फ्रॉम डिफरेंट डिफरेंट एरिया and we are discussing this topic because these topics are very much in new and it is very important for us to understand this topic for understanding what is going on in the whole world and debate discuss on the issues which are problem problematic for the development for the overall growth of humanity for the overall growth of life okay so, so let's discuss these five important topics of today's discussion so these topics are interesting These topics of discussion are first one is ICBM. Okay, intercontinental ballistic missile. We talk about this missile and the size. Okay. Second one is CPTP, Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. Earlier, the name of the treaty TPP, Trans-Pacific Par Partnership, and in this treaty, twelve countries are participated, in which US is also part of it. But if US is withdraw from TPP, that then that TV will become CPTTP. That means Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. Third one is Black Sea Grand Deal. We talk about Black Sea Grand Deal, what it is and why this issue is, 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 is very much in use. Fourth one is Bimstek and SARC. We talk about number of countries which are participated in Bimstek and number of countries of SARC. Next one is UN Peacekeeping Council. That means forces which are dealing the task of stability, security, and peace processes of the whole world. Okay, so let's talk about the first topic called intercontinental ballistic missile. So what is, just a minute, what is intercontinental ballistic missile, ICBM? Ballistic missile means when you launch a missile, it follow a projectile motion and then fall on the ground. If you launch a missile from there, it follow a projectile motion and then fall on the target area. So ICBM are a ballistic missile that have a range of over 5,500 km. Remember the range. Range of ICBM is 5,500 km and have a nuclear weapon delivery technology. This ICBM ballistic missile is particularly built for launching the nuclear weapon. So it is a nuclear weapon delivery technology. Its range is 5,500 km and it is a ballistic missile. Okay, so remember three important keywords. Ballistic missile, its range, and its capacity. Presently, in addition to the North Korea, Russia, United States, France, United Kingdom, China, India, and Israel are the only country that are in documented possession of land-based ICBM. So there are eight countries who have this technology. These are USA, Russia, China, India, France, UK, Israel, and North Korea. So these eight countries are do have documented this, in the, documented the possession of land-based ICBM. Okay, next one is, what is ballistic missile? A ballistic missile is a type of missile that uses projectile motion to deliver warhead, warhead, which is on the top of the missile, on a target, okay? If you launch missile from there, it follow projectile path and then target the target region. These weapons are powered only during relatively brief period. Okay, so these weapons, ballistic missiles are powered only during relatively for brief period and most of the flight is unpowered. So most of the flight of ICBM is unpowered only for a few brief period, power is provided to these missiles, these weapons. Okay, so I hope you understand about the ICBM, its range, its capacity, and number of countries who have possession of ICBM. So in this picture, you can clearly see from any area this ICBM is launched and it follows the path of projectile motion and then hit the target by following the path of projectile. So this is a picture of ICBM inside. Okay, remember its range, remember its, cap its capacity, that's my nuclear delivery of nuclear weapons and countries, eight countries are 
have the position of this IC domain. Now let's move on to the second topic called CPTT2, Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. Okay, so number of country who are the participant of CPTT2 are in North America, when you look at the map of the world, in North America, Canada and Mexico are part of it. In South America, Peru and Chile are part of it. In Oceania, New Zealand and Australia are part of it. In Southeast, in Southeast Asia, you can see Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei, and then Vietnam. These four countries are from Southeast Asia. These two are from North America. These two from South America. These two are from Oceania. Total one, and then one is Japan. So these are the member of CPTTP. If you add USA, all the twelve were member of TPP. But TPP is yeah, now uh, this organization not again. So now this TPP is TPP minus USA is equal to CPP, CPTPP. In the name of CPT Comprehensive and Progressive Alliance for Trans Pacific Partnership. And these are eleven member in CPP eleven member in TPP twelve. Member. The pact requires countries to eliminate or significantly reduce tariff. What is this pact talk about? This pact talk about elimination and significantly reduction of tariffs and make strong commitment to opening services and investment market. Okay. So for opening of the strong services and investment market, country have suggested or country have mandated that they have to reduce their tar tariff, either eliminate it or reduce very significantly so that opening of services and investment market or take place in other country. It also is rule addressing competition, intellectual property rights and protection for foreign companies. So the, in the rules of CPPTTP, these important provisions are listed there. First one is related to competition, second one is related to IPR, and third one is protection of foreign companies. That is, if company of one, one country establish their branch in another country, it is the responsibility of another country to protect the interest of that foreign country, foreign company. Next one is CPTTP is seen as a bulwark against China's dominance in the region. We know that in the region of Pacific, Indo-Pacific, presence of China is very strong. So to counter the presence of China, this CPTTP act like a bulwark. Although Beijing have applied to join this CPTTP along with Taiwan, Ukraine, Costa Rica, Uruguay, and Ecuador. Okay, so Uruguay, Uruguay is a country of South America, Costa Rica, Ecuador, a Caribbean country, Ukraine, we know that, of Europe, and Taiwan is a East Asia country. So along with Taiwan, Ukraine, Costa Rica, Uruguay, and Ecuador, Beijing also applied to join the CPTTP. And CPTTP is established to counter the presence of China in the Indo-Pacific region. Okay, so through this map, you can clearly see the member country of CPTTP. In North America, Canada and Mexico. In South America, Peru and Chile. Okay. Here is East Asia, it is Japan. In Southeast Asia, it is Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, and Singapore. And in Oceania, Australia, and New Zealand. So these are 11 CPTTP countries. Now let's move on to the next topic. Next topic is Black Sea Green Deal. What is this deal? Is? So it is basically a deal. Russia has said that it is withdrawing from the Black Sea Green Deal. This deal assures safe passage to ships carrying grain from Ukraine. Okay, so let's say this is a country of Ukraine. Black Sea is situated there. So if grain passes from Ukraine to another country, it has to travel to the Black Sea. And we know that there is ongoing war between Ukraine and Russia. Is. War between Ukraine and Russia is going on. So Russia earlier put a sanction on the passage of these ships who are loading gold, grain from the Ukraine and unloading in another country. But due with the mediation of UN and Turkey, Russia agreed that it, you can say, remove its sanction and allow the passage of these ships who are carrying grain from Ukraine and unload on the other country. But now Ukraine is bombarded a bridge near, you can say, uh, what is that called? What is the region which uh, Russia occupied from Ukraine? Crimea. Yes. 
Okay, so near Crimea, a bridge called a bridge is very important for the Russia transport is attacked by the Ukraine. So in the response of this, Russia said that it you can say remove or you can say it Russia are not following the earlier protocol which is written in this deal and Russia is withdrawing from this deal. Okay, and this deal Black Sea Grand Deal is brokered by UN and Turkey. So remember Russia said that it is withdrawing from the Black Sea Grand Deal, which is assured safe passage of two ships carrying grain from Ukraine. Okay, so this is very important because if Russia uh, withdraw from that deal, then grain from Ukraine is not reaching to other parts of the country and it created a very severe problem for food security, for economic purposes, as well as for the life of human beings who are living in the developing countries. Okay, so it is required that many member countries come together and negotiate on that deal and create, you can say, solve this problem through a mediation process and mediate a way through which both countries have resolved this issue. Because it is not a problem of Russia and Ukraine, it is a problem of the whole world. If grain is not reaching from Ukraine to other country, other people suffer. Okay. Now let's move on to the next topic. So this picture can clearly see this is a ship carrying grain and it passes in a Black Sea region and Russia give a you can say give a free pass to Ukrainian ships which are carrying wheat or grains. Okay, but now Russia has come out from this deal and it is very problematic for the whole world. So see the picture of ship carrying the grain in a black sea. Now let's move to the next topic called Bimstek and SAR. So Bimstek and SAR are basically two regional organizations in South Asia. And in Bimstek, there are seven countries, India, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Myanmar, and Thailand. And in SARC, there are eight countries, India, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Maldives. So eight countries in SARC and seven countries in Bimstek. And five countries are common in the both organizations. These are India, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. So I generally call it as I-5. That means neighboring country of India, like India, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka are five countries which are common in Bimstek as well as in SARC. In SARC, three countries are added Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Malaysia, uh, Maldives. In Bimstek, two other countries are uh, added Myanmar and Thailand. Okay, so remember the name of the country. So in this topic, I just uh, I just highlighted the countries which are different from these common countries. So in Bimstek, we know that common five countries, then Myanmar and Thailand, and in SARC, of five common countries and then Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Maldives. Through this picture, you can clearly see this is a Bifste country. So common countries are common country of Bifste Kasarka, India, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bhutan, and Bangladesh, and two other countries like Myanmar and Thailand added in the common country. And then in SAR, common five countries and then Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Maldives are added. So remember I5 plus three in SAR and I5 plus three in plus two in Bimstek. I pass the five common country near India in the both directions. Okay. Now let's move on to the next topic called UN peacekeeping mission. What is the UN peacekeeping mission? The UN peacekeeping mission is a joint effort between Department of Peace Operation and Department of Operation Support. So it is a joint effort of Department of Peace Operation, remember Peace Operation and of Department of Operational Support. It aims to assist host country to transition from a situation of conflict to peace. So in let's say in any region conflict is going on. So UN peacekeeping force deploy in that region and they try to transition this state from a conflict to peace. And it is a joint organization of peace or operation and operational support. The UN began its peacekeeping effort in 1948. Okay, remember UN began this peacekeeping effort in 1948, just one year after the independence of India. India independent, independence of India took place in 1947. And in 1948, the US began this peak, peacekeeping effort. When it deployed military observer in West Asia. Okay, at this time in 1948, UN peacekeeping effort deployed military observer in West Asia. West Asia, like Saudi, Yemen, Oman, Kuwait, Iraq, these are the West Asian country. The peacekeeping mission role was to monitor and armist monitor the armistice agreement between Israel and its Arab neighbor. Okay. 
So the role of peacekeeping mission at this time is to monitor the armistice, armistice agreement, that means agreement related to arms and munition. So peacekeeping mission, role of the peacekeeping mission is to monitor the armistice agreement between Israel and Arab neighbor. At that time, conflict is going on a, on a large scale between Israel and Arab neighbor. So UN peacekeeping must try to monitor the armistice agreement and try to transition this area from a conflict to peace. Now let's move on to the next uh, next bullet point. UN peacekeeping provides security as well as political and peace building support. It not only provides security, it provides security as well as political and peace building support to conflict ridden country. If any con country is going into a conflict ridden state, then US peacekeeping provides security, political as well as peace building support. It try to establish peace, try to stabilize the political system as well as provide security from their enemies. The three basic principles that guide UN peacekeeping mission are so three basic principles of UN peacekeeping. Just a minute. Mission, sir. First one is consent of the party. Party, let's say, fight going on between two countries. So there is a consent of these two countries that you will send US peacekeeping forces in their country. So consent is required. Consent of the party is required. Then impartiality. You will have to deal with that conflict in, a, in an impartial matter. That means you do not have partial towards one region and not towards. Let's say there is conflict going on between country and country. If UN peacekeeping force pass, uh, have uh, some partial decision in the favor of A, then B, then it is a, then other country may, you can say, not taking the support of UN and it is against the mandate of the UN. Okay, so first one is consent, second one is impartiality, third one is non use of forces except in self defense and defense of the mandate. Okay, so you do not have to, peacekeeping forces of UN have not to use forces except in the self defense and defense of the mandate. Okay, let's say if a fight is going on in the two countries, you do not have to, you can say, launch your own weapon. Either you launch the your weapon for your self defense. Let's say fight going on between two countries. You have to re resolve the conflict or solve the conflict. Rather, you do not have to fight or you can say launch your war, your own weapon in a country A or a country B. You have to resolve the fight. If country A or country B harming you, then you have for self de defense. You launch your you can say weapon. Otherwise, no. Or for the defense of the mandate. That means if impart if partiality is going on then you have to launch your weapon or if consent is not provided then you if consent is not provided then peacekeeping forces are not centered in their country if it is impartial then also you have to defend this mandate and then launch and use the forces for preserving it okay so through this picture you can clearly see these are the un peacekeeping forces who are you can say deployed in any deployed in the region where conflict is going on. So basically this is a UN peacekeeping process of the country of India. Okay. This is a logo of UN. So I hope you understand these five important topics. Okay. These five important topics are first one is it Bimstek and SAR. Then UN peacekeeping forces. Then black sea Green Deal, then other two years, TPTTP and ICBM. TP, TPP and then fifth one is ICBM. So just a minute, I summarize the whole topic in a very lucid manner. So I want some space regarding that. So let's summarize the whole topic. First one is ICBM, Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. It follows projectile path. Its range is 5,500 kilometers, and eight countries have, 
have this technology. These eight countries are Israel, North Korea, USA, Russia, India, China, then UK, France. Yeah, these eight countries have this technology, ICBM technology. Remember its range and it is, it's, you can say it's CNC or you can say it is mainly built for de delivering nuclear weapons. So its capacity is delivering nuclear weapons. Next one is CPTTP. 11 parties are the member of this CPTTP comprehensive. This is CPTTP comprehensive progressive alliance agreement for trans Pacific partnership. These 11 countries are in North America, Canada, and Mexico. Here in South America, Peru and Chile. In Oceania, New Zealand and Australia. In South Asia, we are Thailand, Vietnam, Singapore, Brunei, and here it is Japan. Okay, so these 11 countries are part of CPTTP. And it is for reducing or you can say eliminating or significantly reducing the tariff so that other countries are trading in your country and it is the mandate of this agreement that you provide protection to other host, other foreign company. Then next one is, third one is uh, Black Sea Green, Black Sea Green Day, USA is withdrawing from that deal. This deal is basically from allowed passes of Ukrainian ships which are carrying wheat of grains and mediated by Turkey and Union. Fourth one is Bimstead and Sark. Okay. So we know that number of Bimstead I5 plus 3, I5 plus 2 and in Sark I5 plus 3. I5 basically India, Sri Lanka, Bhutan, Nepal and Bangladesh. And these three are these three are Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Maldives, and these two are Myanmar and Thailand. So in Bimstek, seven countries are member of Bimstek, and eight countries are member of South. And this is the organization, regional organization of South Asia. And the last one is UN peacekeeping forces. So the last one is UN peacekeeping forces. In 1948, UN peacekeeping forces is formed. And deployed these forces, deployment of these forces take place in resolving the conflict of Israel and West Asian countries. It's three important mandate of UN peacekeeping forces. First is consent, then impartiality, and then non-use of non-use of weapon. All non uh, not use that means UN peacekeeping forces not using their weapon except in self-defense or protecting the mandate of the human discussion force. So these are the important topics of today discussion. Now let's solve five important questions and through these five questions we revise the whole idea of discussion. So first question is consider the following statement regarding intercontinental ballistic missile or ICBM. Statement one is ICBM or ballistic missile that have a range of 5,500 kilometers. Yes, this one is true. Second, it is a primarily designed for nuclear weapon delivery. Primary de design is for delivering nuclear weapon delivery. Third, presently India is not the earliest of countries that are in documented position of land-based ICBM. India is a member of it. So this one is wrong. Statement one is correct. Two is correct. That means how many of the statement is correct? Two. So two. Only two is correct. So option B is correct. Just check we are on the right path or not. Option B is correct. That means we are on the right path. Now let's move on to the next question. Consider the following statement regarding comprehensive and progressive agreement for trans Pacific partnership. Means CPTTP. First, the pact requires country to eliminate or reduce tariff and make a strong commitment to opening services and investment market. Yes. Opening services and investment market for other countries by reducing tariff and eliminating by eliminating or reducing the tariff. So this one is correct. Second one is 
it also has rules addressing competition ipr and protection of foreign companies it is a mandate of this cptp and this in this their rule competition ipr and protection of foreign companies are listed this one is also there united states and india are members of cptp now usa is not a member of it and india is also not a member of cptp so three is wrong that means one is correct two is correct how many of the questions are correct only two so option b is correct just check here on the right path one option b is correct now let's move on to the next question consider the next one consider the i'm sorry the black sea grain initiative recently seen in news was backed by okay so this black sea grain initiative was backed by united nations and turkey so in this option only un only organization is given so this one is correct that is option c is correct just check here on the right path one here on the right path now let's see. why un because it is dealing with the food security of the whole world and un is a organization in which 193 members are participated that means whole world is participated in UN. that's why black sea green initiative is backed by the un so option c is correct just check you're on the right path or not option c is correct that means you're on the right path now let's move to the next question which of the following country are not member of both fintech and sa okay we know that i5 these are member of both the organization so country which are not the part of i5 or not in bimstek as well as in sar so which of the following countries are not member of both okay so myanmar come and i5 no bhutan come yes maldives come no sri lanka come yes so one and three me myanmar and maldives are not part of both bimstek and sar bhutan and sri lanka are so one and three that means option b is correct just check we are on the right path or not option b is correct that means we are on the right path Now let's move on to the last question. Consider the following statement regarding UN peacekeeping mission. First one is the UN peacekeeping mission is a joint effort between Department of Peace Operation and Department of Operational Support. Yes, and aims to assist host country to transition from situation of conflict to peace. Absolutely correct. It is a joint venture of operation Department of Operational Support and Department of Peace Operation, and it is it assists host country to transition from the situation of conflict to peace. So this one is correct. Second is UN peacekeeping does not deal with the political support to conflict resolution. No. It deals with security, political service, as well as establishing peace in that region. So this one is wrong. One of the basic principles of peacekeeping mission is non-use of foreign, non-use of force, except in self-defense and defense of the member states. It is the basic principle of UN peacekeeping force is the non-use of force, except in the situation of self-defense and defense of member. So this one is correct. One is correct. C is correct. That means option C is correct. Just check whether the right path or not. Option C is correct. This means we are on the right path. So I hope you love this video. You enjoy this video and gain some perspective from our discussion. So keep learning, keep growing, and apply this apply this knowledge in your life and aware about what is going on in the whole world and through which you can solve the problem of your nation, your region, and in the whole world. Because many people who are just waste their time in creating problems, but there are few people who are solving it. Okay, so become a person. Who are interested in solving the problem rather than creating the problem, and by gaining the, this knowledge, you are aware about what is going on in this present situation. So I hope you love it, you enjoy it. So, namaskaram, thank you.